My name is Brianna Knickerbocker. I was born and brought up in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Grew up dancing, singing, putting on plays. I even had this audio interview show. I interviewed grandmas, meaning I made up a lot of old lady voices. Then some kids got kidnapped by aliens. Things got weird. I think that was the start of my voiceover career. My mom constantly had the camera pointed towards me and I milked every moment. I ended up in LA pursuing voiceover in a very roundabout way. So when I was picking my major for college, I had to decide between all my artistic pursuits. It was a really, really difficult decision. I felt pressure to get a degree in something I would really need a degree in if I decided to go down that route. So I settled on fashion design. It wasn't until I made the move out to Los Angeles after getting my bachelor's and I was given the opportunity to have a trial day at a fashion company did I realize fashion was absolutely not the right fit for me. I remember sitting in my car at lunch and crying. My soul was speaking loud and clear. There was no arguing with it. So just like that, I quit. Started searching around for what I was really supposed to be doing and found acting again. Acting was so exciting. Every day was different, and I got to play these really interesting characters. It was really what I was supposed to be doing all along. I acted in this hilarious web series called Dirty Cues, indie films, then one day, randomly, I saw a voiceover casting on the website that I would apply for acting jobs. I thought to myself, oh my gosh, voiceover, that would be so fun. It was for these really quirky explainer videos. I remember going into audition and not having any idea what I was doing. It was disembodying only using my voice to act. Then I booked it, and the whole idea and world of voiceover opened up to me. But for a long time, I never pursued anime voice acting. I heard from a few people that it was just a small niche group of voice actors that voiced anime, and it was an impossible circle to get into. I felt really down about that because I grew up watching anime. I loved anime. But I let those people's words affect me and stop me from pursuing what I loved. Until a few years later, and I saw a workshop with the casting director of Bang Zoom, Mami Okada. I had this very real moment where I checked in with myself and that hope of what if overrode the words of those people saying it was a closed off group of actors and impossible to break into. And I signed up for the workshop. I'm Chisaki Hiradaira. I'm hoping that I learn how to get used to coming to school on the surface very soon. It's nice to meet you all. I remember working in the booth at the workshop with mommy and how she said my voice was cute. Right after the workshop, I was called into Bang Zoom to audition in person. I was so nervous. I was auditioning for Nagi Asu, A Lull in the Sea, and she had me audition for a few lead characters. Funny story about that, she had me audition for Miyuna, Sayu, and Monica, but not for Chizaki. I was done auditioning, and all of a sudden, Mommy asked me if I could wait a few minutes. I said yes, of course, and she went out of the room, came into the booth where I was recording, and handed me the sides for Chizaki. My immediate thinking was, okay, I'm not going to book any of the lead characters, and this was just an afterthought of, oh, well, maybe she'll get this one. Little did I know how special Chizaki is and what an emotionally pivotal role she is in the show. Basically a dream role for me. I think it was a few weeks later and I got the email. I booked the role of Chizaki in my very first anime. It's not that I don't like the people on the surface or anything. It's just that I want to stay in the sea forever. I want to stay here with Monica and you and Hikari. I immediately fell head over heels for voicing anime. It was challenging and rewarding all at the same time, and emotionally satisfying. And getting to see the animation immediately as you're recording it, 
it's addictive and instantly gratifying. I found voice acting in general to be much more imaginatively fulfilling than on camera work. Because on camera, I'd be Rachel, and maybe I'd have some boyfriend problems. But in anime, I got to be a thousand-year-old fairy in a love affair with the fox's sin of greed. Oh, I wish it had been me that Bon came to steal, instead of the Fountain of Youth. Should I do that too? <laughs> the casting process for each show really varies, speaking of Elaine. For Seven Deadly Sins, I originally auditioned to be Elizabeth. Obviously didn't book that. But then randomly, I got an email saying I was cast as Elaine. So I never auditioned for Elaine. For ReZero, I did audition for Rem. I also auditioned for Rom. ReZero, Seven Deadly Sins, Yuki Yuna as a Hero were all shows I worked on with the director Chris Kaysen. He is one of my favorite directors to work with. I trust him so much and rely on him to help me sound as honest and believable as possible while juggling matching lip flaps. It is an oddly difficult job, and it really takes the whole team of everybody involved to make things sound gorgeous. Tony Oliver and Wendy Lee both directed me in Alone in the Sea, and I learned so, so much from the both of them, especially considering that was my first anime. Tony and I have been working together since my very start at Bing Zoom. We started with Alone in the Sea and Omega Quintet, and more recently we've worked together on Mary Skelter and Hunter Hunter. Wendy and I have continued working together on the Fire Emblem games. On the surface, animes and video games seem very different, but acting-wise, there are some similarities. Video games can be narrative-based and sometimes instructional, informative-based. Same in anime. Sometimes you play a character with an emotional backstory that's narrative, and sometimes your character can be more information-based, like Elena and Ida in Hunter x Hunter. And of course, there are differences too. There's so much freedom in games not having to match lip flaps generally. Ease 8 was narrative and emotional. I felt so lucky to be part of telling her story. In Ease 8, I had over a thousand loops, or a thousand lines. But even with all those loops, I still wrapped the project pretty quickly because you do all of your lines within a few succinct sessions for video games. Compare it to a show like ReZero, where you're working on it for six months. Even though you're not recording every day on the anime, you get to live longer with that character and that imaginary world. As an actor, you want to dive deep into this other world, become this other character, and honestly portray them as you speak their words. So bigger roles feel so satisfying. Looking back over the years, seeing all these incredible characters I've been so lucky to give life to, rather than seeing a whole lot of obvious shifts in the roles I get cast in, I think I just see a lot of comparisons or this really strong through line. There's always been this tendency towards booking soft-spoken or shy girls. I'm getting pretty hungry. Want to get some food? But there's also this edge. They either have a troubled past or they have this hidden strength about them. It's all about what's underlying the topical traits. So what's beneath the shyness? Or why is this character soft-spoken? That's the part I look for that I get really excited about. In more recent years, I have been cast in more emotionally dark roles, damaged characters. So there is a lot going on underneath that perceived shyness or soft-spoken quality. Through these characters' difficult pasts, I see a lot of overlap between characters I voiced because sadness, tragedy, grief, they are all universal feelings. Donna's mom died in a fire, causing Donna much anguish for feeling responsible for her mother's death. Flamey's mother never even wanted her, and basically disowned her, leaving Flamey with massive walls up, unable to let anyone in, unable to trust. Yuna has been brainwashed by the market makers, the bad guys, and lives off a survival instinct, taught to not trust her most precious childhood friend. Rem's twin sister lost her demon horn and powers, leaving Rem feeling completely responsible and pressured to live for the both of them. Watching stories unfold in TV and film is cathartic, 
and inclusive and entangling in this tangible way. I want to be able to give people that have lost things or lost people in their lives a few moments where their grief or any of their feelings are echoed in my performance. And for those moments, they don't feel alone. There's something so therapeutic about screaming at the top of your lungs, tearing up in the booth because you've managed to transform and empathize and become your character. It is an indescribable, electric feeling. We're here. So what now? Mother. Father. Come back. I need you. Luna in Shadowverse has lost her parents blocked it out and then she's forced to face that she completely breaks i was in the booth my eyes tearing up my blood boiling screaming in pained tears about my dead mom and dad luna's dead mom and dad and the clients were on the other end literally crying and i felt like i really was luna and speaking for her feeling what she felt i don't know any words that can explain that magic so when you have a character like Rem in ReZero, who is going to go into beast demon mode and scream, not just verbally scream, but from an emotional, psychological place, you have to balance matching lip flaps, be emotionally honest in that moment by identifying with your character and using your imagination, and destroy your voice. It's all for love. You love the character and see what they're going through and you say, you deserve to have your story told. I'm going to give it everything I have inside me to do justice to you and what you've gone through. When I originally auditioned for Rem, I had no idea about the show. I did a tiny bit of research and quickly realized how huge the show was, so stopped right there. It's really painful to get emotionally attached to an audition and then not book it so you have to protect yourself. So only if I book the show am I allowed to research the character and watch the show. A week later, when I got the email that I was the voice of Rem, I screamed and cried and ran around my house like an idiot. I knew the show was massive, and I already felt so, so lucky to be Rem. Then I watched the show. Wow, talk about no words. For a long time, I was just in shock about what a dream role this was for somebody like myself that loves emotionally dark and rich roles. Working with Chris on the crazy confession episode and on the beast mode moments in my personal favorite episode 15 took a lot of energy. That confession episode took so many sessions, a lot of the loops or bunching of sentences Rem said in a row were sometimes six to eight lines, which would normally be spread out in different loops. It is a lot to match to lip flaps, and a lot of emotion you have to stay in over and over and over again. ReZero is one of my favorite animes I've ever seen, speaking from a fan's perspective, and getting to be in the show as this dimensional, exciting character. What can I say? I just don't have words. <laughs> I'd like to say thank you to the Cartoon Cypher for having me, and the biggest thank you to all of my amazing fans. I have an exciting secret project that I'm going to release when I hit a thousand subscribers on YouTube. For all of those that subscribe, I'm going to give you exclusive access to the secret project once it announces for the first 48 hours. Little hint, the secret project has to do with Rem and ReZero. I announce all my new roles and con appearances on Twitter. Follow me at Brianna Noel K 